I have about a hundred million reasons why LeBron James isn't retiring. Dustin May is out until at least the All-Star break. And in a stunning role reversal, somebody actually wants to play for the UCLA basketball program. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. It is May 24th, 2023. I'll be on my way to the airport in a few minutes. Missed my wife already, but let's chat first. Let's try and uplift the mood. Talk LA. If you like being in the know about LA sports, clickety-clack the like button. Clickety-clack the subscribe button. There's a notification bell. Hit that. It'll let you know we drop new content. Sharing's caring. Let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. Look forward to hearing from you guys. And by the way, we've gotten a lot more views over the last week or two, so keep it going. Love to see you. Before we go through the news and notes, a look at the scoreboard. Dodgers 8, Atlanta 1. A good old-fashioned southern fried ass kicking down and burning Atlanta in Bobby Miller's Major League debut. J.D. Martinez homers, Jason Hayward homers, but Miller winds up being the big story, allowing just one run in five innings to a pretty potent Braves lineup. Meanwhile, Galaxy 2, LAFC nothing. El Trafico in the U.S. Open Cup. Tyler Boyd and Ricky Pooch both score for the Galaxy. They advance to the quarterfinals. Let's be real though, not too impressive of a win. LAFC threw out a bunch of reserves against the Galaxy's first team. So there is that. Meanwhile today, Dodgers are at Atlanta one more time. The game's at 420. Tony Gonsolin is 2-1 with a 1.13 ERA. Bryce Edler, 3-0, 2.06 ERA. Now, I have a friend in L.A. still doing stand-up, right? And he has a pretty solid bit where he talks, the, the point is about money in sports and what that really means to the athletes. I'm not going to do the bit for you because that's stealing his bit. It belongs to him. But it came to mind because yesterday I did not talk about the specific reasons why I don't think LeBron James is retiring just yet because I wanted to get my facts straight. Last summer, LeBron James signed a two-year, $97 million contract extension. And by the way, that extension has not taken effect yet. It hasn't. Anyone remember that? Nobody in their right mind walks away from $97 million. Now you might say, but LeBron has a ton of money and you would be right. It's still $97 million. He's not walking from it. It's not happening. And by the way, <clears throat> I mentioned that the whole idea of LeBron James ever playing for the Lakers was a marriage of convenience, right? The Lakers, they wanted a name. LeBron wanted LA. And it's not necessarily for the lifestyle. The Lakers, unlike the Cleveland Cavaliers, are a worldwide recognized brand. Worldwide recognized brand which means a lot to countries like, say, China, which means a lot to Nike. And of course, that means LeBron would be walking away from tens of millions more. So no. And by the way, that's not me trying to give you some sort of weird conspiracy theory. It's just numbers. It doesn't mean LeBron is a Chinese spy. It means he knows what Nike wants and Nike knows what China wants. They want to see LeBron, Los Angeles, the big lights, the big city. It impresses them. It's just the way it is. So over a hundred million dollars. He's not walking from it. No chance. Now, as for James's injured foot, he told ESPN that he has an MRI soon to see if surgery is needed. Multiple doctors told him during the year that he will need to get surgery on the foot. So look, as far as I'm concerned, this MRI is going to get, it's a fait accompli. He will be getting surgery. I would bank on it. Absolutely. It's not going to be a surprise if we find out that his foot was damaged a lot more severely than we were originally led to believe. Remember, he came back pretty quickly for this playoff run. But let's assume for the moment that I'm full of turd on both counts. I don't like to cuss. And it wouldn't be the first time I was full of turd, I might add. Let's assume LeBron James does in fact retire. 
First of all, the situation would not be as dire as social media would have you believe. The trades the Lakers made at the NBA trade deadline not only made the team younger, but it actually made the team more, uh, more talented. It gave them a variety of ways to win. Those younger players played a major role in the Lakers having the second best record in the NBA after the trade deadline. And that included times when they didn't have LeBron, when they didn't have Anthony Davis. So that was some talent that came in. The James contract, if he decides to retire, could theoretically be off the books and the Lakers could then go pursue another big name. A youthful, talented roster plus cap space in a major media market, that is not a bad starting point, folks. Not at all. Now, I try not to get too much into rumors. I'm going to, once again, discount one that you're going to be hearing about a ton, okay? And I'm also going to give you one, eh, maybe you might want to pay attention, maybe. Multiple league sources have said the Lakers have had internal discussions into what it would take to trade for Atlanta's Trey Young. Possible. Possible. Consider it a lottery ticket level sort of thing, but possible. And I want to repeat this from yesterday's clip because you are going to read Kyrie, names, Kyrie Irving's name over and over and over. And you're going to hear about it from ESPN, from Brian Windbag, who can't, he does nothing. He breaks, he doesn't break stories. He just looks on the internet and repeats a rumor. He's just basically trying to stir up hype. So Kyrie Irving to the Lakers. Well, the Lakers could create up to 35 million in cap space, but here's what they would have to do. They would have to get rid of Jared Vanderbilt, Bo Bamba, Malik Beasley, D'Angelo Russell, Lonnie Walker, Rui Hachimura, then trade Max Christie, and trade their upcoming first round pick. All of that to get $35 million in cap space. But that still doesn't matter because Kyrie Irving thinks he deserves $47 million a year. Does anybody think Kyrie Irving is going to give the Lakers a $12 million a year discount? Of course not. If you do, go to Target, buy some tinfoil, and start making some hats. It's not happening. It isn't. By the way, feel free to say hello to Cockblock or the Cat, making her once a month cameo appearance in the lower corner of the screen. Now, as for the initial reaction from the franchise about LeBron's cryptic quote, the Lakers brass is saying all the things that you would expect. Oh, LeBron can have all the time he wants. We totally get it. He deserves to take all that time. We really hope he continues his career. But hey, he doesn't even have to come in for exit interviews. Just, you know, decompress, think things over. I think they know the answer already. I think they know he's not leaving. GM Rob Palinka said he intends to keep the core together. Now, Kyra, Kyle Kuzma thought that quote was hilarious, which may be but it's not nearly as hilarious as Tristan Thompson saying that he wants to return to the Lakers. Dude, go back to the Kardashian mansion and have your masculinity completely trashed. That was you. You're probably not coming back to the Lakers. You didn't do anything. The Dodgers have transferred starting pitcher Dustin May to the 60 day injured list. Now, practically speaking, this was expected. They, they were saying his elbow injury needed about six weeks to settle down. That's already a month and a half. So what's another week or two? We will not be seeing Dustin May until after the All-Star break, late July. They gave him this shot in the elbow, and because of that treatment, he shouldn't even be considering throwing a baseball for at least a month. There is a belief, though, that this means Gavin Stone, another big pitching prospect in the Dodgers farm system, will get a minimum, a minimum, of four starts in the majors, not just because of the injury to Dustin May, but because of the injury to Julio Arias. Gavin Stone has a chance to try to show everybody what he can do at the bigs. Hey guys, somebody actually wants to play for Mick Cronin this year. So good, 
Let's all give a nice little clap for UCLA. They've added Slovenian guard Jan Vide yesterday. He is the third European player on the roster. He joins two dudes whose names I couldn't pronounce. Now, Vide is a shooting guard. And if you are a Bruins fan, you might be sitting there thinking, great, we might have replaced Amari Bailey. That's a little bit of a stretch, guys. Wee bit of a stretch. But adding players is a nice change of pace over at UCLA. So that's a plus. We'll give them that. Organized training activities open for the Rams without either Aaron Donald or Cooper Cup. The two of them apparently had family matters to attend to. Cup definitely did. He's about to become a father again. Now the Rams spun this a little bit, saying that it's good for Donald not to be there, for example, because he dominates everything in practice. And how are we going to teach? He treats practice just like a game. He destroys everything in his sight. Look, I love Aaron Donald too, okay? Let's stop acting like you're trying to sell me a used car, okay? It seems a little bit too chamber of commerce-y, everything is beautiful sort of way. It's just leave it be, leave it be. Meanwhile, Coach Sean McVay said coaching as many as 40 first-year players is, quote, refreshing. Yeah, refreshing. Like an ice-cold can of Bud Light, refreshing. Like a bubble bath in a jacuzzi and you discover something brown floating in it. Refreshing. Refreshing. Now Matthew Stafford says a number of his newer teammates have come up to him and said the same thing. Dude, totally watched you when I was growing up. Now if that doesn't make you consider taking out a living will, I don't know what will. But there is a slower pace in the workouts because this roster is so young. Particularly at quarterback. Now, that doesn't include Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford knows the playbook. He knows what the Rams are trying to do. He can go full speed. But virtually everybody else, instead of zipping through things, they walk through it, baby steps. Then they talk about it a little bit, maybe jog through it. In other words, it's becoming two, three, four times as long because they want to make sure these players know what the hell they're doing. Rookie quarterback Stetson Bennett admitted to, quote, kind of freaking out about the play calls, unquote, during his first day. He says it's completely different to college. As a result, he didn't take part in 11-on-11 drills. Because, again, baby steps. ESPN reports four men are interviewing for the vacant Phoenix Suns coaching job. None of them are Clippers coach Ty Lue, so it's about time we all moved on from that rumor. Would you let me know what you think of the comments thread? Let me know what you think about the idea of LeBron potentially turning away a hundred plus million dollars. Are you as skeptical about that as I am? Let me know what you think about the state of the Dodgers rotation. And if you enjoyed talking LA sports, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We talk LA sports every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corte El Queso production. Take care.